Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. What we're gonna do is talk about how I have my Autopilot 136 set up. So let's turn on the GoPro and get right into it. All right, let's get started up here at the front of the boat. But before I do, if you want to know about all the standard features that come with the boat, be sure to check out my other video, the walkthrough of the Old Town Autopilot 136, and it'll list everything. So if I was going to run a fish finder, this is the battery that I would use. It's the FPV Power, 12 volts, 17 and a half amp hour. Plenty of juice for all day use. You can probably get two uses if I were going to put a fish finder on this bad boy. So we go in here to the cockpit and normally what y'all are going to see is this right here. This is my view. This is y'all's view whenever I'm out there on the water. What do I have in here? I've got the Ego Ultra Grip. This guy is really nice to have. It's been a, a, a welcome addition to the boat. And this dude is super light, all aluminum, stainless steel jaws. I do not baby these things. You can see crusted up salt all over in it. And uh, this right here just helps it to float, but very, very light. It's also got an accurate scale, so I can weigh my fish. That normally is right there. Uh, right here on the gear tracks, I've got some one inch track balls from Ram Mount. And that's so that I can put my little arm from Ram uh, that holds my GoPro. I can put it on either side to give y'all the best possible shot. I can kind of turn this right there, aim it whichever way, and if the sun is that way, I would have it here. If the sun is on this side, then I would put it right there so that y'all don't get much of a glare. So I got that. I've got a rod holder. I don't even know who makes this one, but it's pretty cool. Not a rod holder. It's a, what do you call it? A paddle holder. So you can do that and when the wind is blowing it's not actually moving this because if you have it like this right there the wind blows it does that that rocking noise makes noise transmits through the hole out into the water and then boom you spook your redfish uh, if you don't believe me go out there try to sight cast these fellas and the slightest noise something tapping the hole is going to spook those guys so that's why i've added this right here um Let's move back a little bit more in the pockets. I've got a nice heavy duty set of pliers. You got a WD-40 these guys ever so often. It's supposed to be stainless, rust proof steel, whatever. Yeah, right. Uh, we got some cutting shears. Whenever I bleed my fish out, I clip their gills with this right there. And I also open up the belly so that I can get their innards out and then put it inside the fish bag. And then a very valuable tool right here, some forceps. These are from Berkeley. Uh, if I fail to mention any particular product that I'm using, the name or whatever, please do me a favor. Go down into the description of this video and try and find the just like find the product itself. It's got links that'll take you to Amazon where you can purchase it. And if you do make a purchase, well then awesome because I will earn a commission for the channel and that helps us out. So in this cup holder, I always have some Procure. So this is the shrimp, uh, what I have come to be confident with and in hopes that it's gonna attract the fish. I don't know, but it does build my confidence. So I keep that inside that cup holder right there. Over here, you got a hatch, a dry box. I carry my remote and then I also have my leader line. So we've got some 20 pound fluorocarbon and then 12 pound. Right now I've been using the 12 pound, but if we get into some nasty stuff, then the 20 pound will be put on there. So that gets stored inside there and it stays dry. And then over here on this cup holder, I've got like my trash can, uh, just a bunch of old line and then I try to empty that out at the end of every fishing trip. So then right next to the seat and underneath the seat, if you have the seat in the high position, you can have three 3,600 uh, waterproof stowaways from Plano. These guys are awesome. It keeps your stuff dry and uh, helps to prevent the rust and corrosion that happens on 
Helps to prevent the rust and corrosion that happens on a lot of your tackle uh, if you have the other trays, but you get, carry three of those. Uh, underneath the seat, here's the battery box. A lot of y'all have had tons of questions concerning the batteries that I use, and well, here they go. I've got two FPV power, 50 amp hours that are connected in parallel. So I have a total of 100 amp hours to run that trolling motor up there. And these, the beauty of these right here, and I won't go any other route uh, unless they can beat FPV power. Uh, these are fully encapsulated. They are fully waterproof. There is no way to get the polarity wrong. Like seriously, you can't because of the way the plugs are. So red is hot black is ground and this is a little pigtail if i decided to run a fish finder well then i can connect the fish finder straight to this and not worry about like anything else so this pigtail has hot and cold so the ground plus the power built into a nice little quick basically dis disconnect so you take that off and there you go so it's a, it's a spectacular battery all the way around. As I was saying, it being waterproof, you can drop it in the water. And for a lot of y'all that do not know, and for those of y'all that do, oh my God, Mark. And for those of y'all that do not know, lithium and water do not mix. Just YouTube a video about lithium and water and you'll see what I mean. But this is fully encapsulated. So if I was to drop that in the water, it's not gonna catch fire and I don't worry about it, which is the main reason why I go with FPV power. And when you connect both of them, well, here goes the hot. So you take that, connect it in. If you tried to put the uh, ground, it's not gonna go. So that's what I love about it. There's no getting it wrong. You connect both hots right there. You get the ground. You plug that bad boy right there, and then you get the other one. Now you're ready to go. This guy is juiced, and you connect your disconnect right into the plug right there. Put the motor into the plug over there, and you're good to go. So one thing I want to mention, you will have to modify your box, your battery box from Old Town because it does not come ready with these FPV uh, plugs. However, it's very simple to do. If I can do it, I know y'all can do it. I, let me get this over here. This is the way the battery box comes from Old Town. And, oh, wait a minute. I've already switched these over as well, I'm sorry. It has one of the, the stainless little loops and it's crimped down so that that loop can go over a battery post. That's what they come with. However, I took those off and I already put these on. So both of my battery boxes are uh, ready to go. Sorry about that. I thought that I didn't uh, convert this one over a long time ago, but uh, I did. So check out the size of these batteries too. This is 100 amp hours. If I decided to put another battery in here to have 150 amp hours i would just move these little pieces of foam out of the way to keep them from sliding around and i can throw a third battery in there if i wanted to um, but there's no need to because 100 amp hours gives me plenty of juice to hot dog that motor on the highest speed setting to get to and from my fishing spots and then everywhere in between on the speed settings to just troll me around and you have got all day power. Um, let's see, I'm gonna plug this guy back up. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the battery itself. Very small, compact size. There's a lot of competitors' batteries out there on the market that are 100 amp hours, but guess what? Their 100 amp hour battery darn near fills the entire battery box. That is ridiculous, mind blown. Look what FPV power has been able to do. And uh, this, in my opinion, is the only way to go if you want an ultra light battery at 100 amp hours right here. Look no further, you pay for what you get. It's a lot more expensive than the others, but I'm not afraid to say that because 
this is the best bang for your buck. All righty, enough about the battery. Hopefully that answers a lot of y'all's questions because man, oh man, did I get tons of questions concerning the battery. Here we go right here, three tackle trays. Uh, this is all I carry with me, soft plastics right here. It's uh, just an assortment of bass fishing lures for the most part. Zoom flukes, Berkley power bait minnows, some bass assassin little curly shads. These right here are redfish killers and flounder and speckled trout. Pretty much anything that swims in salt water will crush these crappie lures. Two inch slabalicious and a tuxedo black. This was given to me. Um, zoom flukes again. Some more. Oh man, I wish I would have realized that I had these inside here, but some more uh, slabalicious. Uh, or actually shad poles from Strike King and then some tiny flukes and a few other little pieces of tackle that's inside there but this right here is my soft water or my soft water this is my soft plastic tray this is a uh, Plano 3600 waterproof stowaway box and uh, does a really good job the next tray has all of my bugs fishing lures the reason why I have a tray dedicated solely to bugs is because they work almost solely we <laughs> we got some strike pink some strike king little bitsy minnows these are sheep's head killers right here if i could get it out but anyhow those right there help you to catch sheep's head that's like the only lure that consistently will get a sheep's head to chase it down and bite so if you want to sight cast sheep's head definitely give that a shot the next tackle tray, the final one, is like my paddle tails. Uh, I've got these right here, the, the black with red flakes and a chartreuse tail. That's my first uh, go-to. The second color is a pearl white with a chartreuse tail. And then just my jig heads. I use a lot of the Ned Locks because those hooks are very stout and redfish for the most part cannot bend them so i carry them in different sizes the hooks that i use for these paddle tails right there their owner twist locks the best actual swim hook with that's weighted on the belly uh, that you could possibly use there it is right there the best ones by far uh, that i have found in my experience and pretty awesome got a top water so that's my third and final tackle tray. Now, if I decide to go out there with anything else, I'll just grab another stowaway from inside the tackle room and uh, we'll carry it back here. Moving to the back, my fish bag. This is from Ego. It, the reason why I got this one is because it fits perfectly right here and it's cheaper than the competition, but it's not cheap in build quality. This thing is pretty stout, lots of padding, and uh, I can fit two ice packs in here. So I don't buy ice anymore. I just freeze my ice packs, put one on the bottom, put the fish in the middle, put one on top of the fish, and there you go. It keeps my fish nice and cool for two days. Um, so a really, really great fish bag right there that goes right behind the seat. Now we move over into the uh, middle, the heart of the tank well. I've got a fishing crate that's got four rod holders in each of the corners. What I've done is purchased these little rod holders that mount to it. So I've got two additional right there. And uh, that pretty much holds all my rods. I normally go out with five rods and that's about it. Inside the center, I've got my battery bag and my camera bag right there. This is a Sims backpack that's waterproof. I don't recommend it. The zipper is horrible. It's, I've been having nothing but issues. This right here, the glue popped off and you can see right there. So uh, I'm gonna use it until it gets punctured, but I do not recommend this backpack for what I'm using it for. If you're using it strictly for fishing, for some light stuff, nothing that's gonna weigh the bag down and make your straps pop off then by all means use it do not use it as a camera bag because that's not what it is i got the camera inside there and i've got the big camera lens some of y'all have asked what do i use to get all those shots of the wildlife look at that lens right there super heavy 
and then the camera itself. This is what gets the job done. This guy gets the B-roll, all those really far shots. I'm able to leave the wildlife undisturbed because that guy can zoom in and get a really great shot. Also inside here is the drone. So for aerial footage, we've got the DJI little Mavic Air and uh, that guy will, uh, I launch it from inside the boat on the hand and that's pretty much it. So the Sony, uh, what is it? The A7 III Mark III, that's what we've got right here. And then I've got some G Master lenses. This one's the 16 by 35. The other G Master that y'all just saw is the, I think, 200 to 400. So really high quality gear to be able to get all my shots. And then inside the crate, we've got the battery box. This is for the GoPro batteries. I film continuously while I'm out there. So we've got a total of like 20 or so GoPro batteries. And then I have two backup Sony A7 batteries. And uh, that will allow us to film all day long. Put that up. So right here I have a RAM tube, 2008. It's on a uh, one and a half inch RAM ball, uh, track ball that goes onto the gear track. And this is my rod holster. So as I'm fishing, I just basically put that right there. It holsters my rod just the right position so that the lure dangles right there. I can grab it from my seating position and work with that. Um, we move back a little bit more. You see this little ram. Uh, it's, a, it's like an anchor tie down. That's what I use it for. I put my straps uh, around it right here, which is the cart. That's how I move my kayak to and from the water. That is a Malone wide track cart with these soft foam bumpers. So that goes underneath this strap right here. Let's get it. This bad boy, I've put it through there. I mean, I could put it through, but I mean, there's no sense. It works just as good by going right there and then to this other one. And it anchors the cart down from sliding. Whenever you hit a pothole or a bump, the cart will tend to slide off the kayak. And so these anchor tie downs by ram mount uh, are the perfect solution. Uh, right here, we have my safety flag with a gear track. All of this stuff is track ready. This is the VisiCarbon Pro, and uh, you got a safety light and then your safety flag. So that is there. I also carry during the heat of the summer a one gallon water bucket to, for ice and water because you do not want to dehydrate out there. Also, inside this, I've got my fish measure board right there, 32 inches long. Uh, the bull reds are, they start in the state of Texas from 28 inches and longer. And all I really care to see is if I'm gonna keep a redfish, normally it's gonna be 23 inches or smaller because the bigger ones, uh, a lot of people say the meat is tough. I mean, I don't know because I haven't tried it or anything like that. I say it's hard to cut through their darn rib bones and uh, the younger the fish are, uh, I, I do know for a fact the meat is very tender and uh, it's less likely to have worms. So that's what I keep. But uh, I got the 32 incher because if you're gonna try to measure and find out if it's a bull red, you need to have at least 28 inches on your fish board. That's what I use. Now we move over to this side right here a very clutch product uh, i used to use a smaller net uh, the small hoop on that net uh, just couldn't get it done on some of the bigger fish this one when i found out that ego has a uh, this style net similar to what my other one is it is rubber it's got a rubber mesh basket so your lures aren't going to be able to get snagged into it like on some nylon nets uh, an aluminum frame, very stout. Uh, if you were to drop it in the water, it's gonna float. 
And if you don't want to use this extension, you can just basically take it off and you've got a smaller footprint to keep it in your kayak and uh, it's still going to float. So I put this on because it gives me leverage when trying to net my fish because check this out. I can grab it right there, rest the handle against my forearm and then I've got leverage. So a very clutch product. Check out uh, their nets if you're in Cabela's or Bass Pro. I think they sell these. Uh, you'll see the quality. So uh, that is it with exception to my uh, shallow water micro anchor. Um, this is a blessing and a hindrance all in one. It's a blessing because if the winds are super high, it's going to hold you in place if you decide to use it. It's a hindrance because if you're trying to sight cast reds and it's quiet out, the motor is way too loud that when you engage it, it spooks anything around you to include the redfish. And uh, that's why I think I'm going to try to find me a fiberglass rod. And when I go out there on very quiet days, I'm going to stick a rod inside one of these scuppers and then also like anchor or deploy my trolling motor so the motor itself with use of the pull cord is going to be the first anchor the it will be a pivot point if you just use the motor itself because i do use it to basically deploy it it goes down it sticks in the mud it keeps me from moving around in like a foot deep of water um, the rod the fiberglass rod that I'm going to get is going to be like around four foot long and I'm going to stick that down in there to not have a pivot point so it keeps my orientation the way I want. Uh, yeah, so there you have it everyone. That is my Autopilot 136 setup and uh, it is so far got one trip underneath its belt. Uh, I'm pretty sure I might tweak a few things, but basically the way it's set up is the way I had my Autopilot 120 set up. So the only difference is more carry capacity on this bigger boat and more length. Uh, it tracks a little bit better than my other one. So if I do like try to tweak it, it's gonna be very minimal. For one, I'm probably not even gonna use a fish finder on this one unless I absolutely have to. But uh, aside of that, what you see is what you get. That's the way I will be fishing out of it. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you only came here because you wanted to see how my 136 is set up, do me a favor, click that subscribe button because there's gonna be a lot more content coming and uh, we're gonna test it out in the marsh, in the bays, off the beach, uh, some deep water stuff, and uh, y'all will be able to come along. So don't forget to smash that bell notification icon so that YouTube and Google will let you know whenever those videos get dropped. For everyone else, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.